What is going on there YouTube and welcome back to another comic book video. This is the channel where we sit down and cover different comic book stories from different comic book companies. Now we're going to jump back over to Marvel Comics and continue our coverage over the Ultimate Marvel Universe. It is something we have been covering for the last couple years. This time we are finally going to jump into Ultimate Comics X-Men. This is the book where we get the formation of a new X-Men team after Ultimate Fallout. But shifting the focus back on the last few characters we have left from the original Ultimate X-Men team. So if you like today's comic book video, please leave me a like down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. But I do hope you enjoy today's video. So with this book, it opens up with giving us a reminder of what the world is like for a mutant. Where if you are a mutant, it is illegal and regular humans have the right to shoot mutants on site if they don't turn themselves in. We also learn that there are camps across the nation that are full of mutants. So basically, if you are a mutant, there is nowhere for you to go to feel safe really. Now we're going to shift the focus on Karen Grant aka Jean Grey. We see her going to a home of a young child and hoping the parents will be okay with the child leaving with her. Now remember, in our Ultimate X video, Jean Grey goes by Karen Grant now because when she was on the X-Men, the whole world knew who she was. So she has to pretend to be someone else to give her the ability to move around the world freely. But getting back to her going to the home of a new mutant, we see that when she gets there, she is greeted by the parents, where you have the mother acting strange around Jean Grey, answering the questions, talking about when her child powers began to manifest. But when Jean Grey wants to meet with the child, Jean Grey hears a gunshot and comes to find out that the father of the new mutant killed her. He did not want his child to go through life as a mutant. But we do get other forms of updates about the world for Ultimate Marvel. And this is picking up from Ultimate Fallout, where the whole world now knows that it was the American government that made mutants. Because remember, in Ultimate Origins, Wolverine was the first mutant, took his gene and made a virus that was airborne and led to a world full of mutants. With this information now being out into the world, you had the American people rioting because of what they now know. We learn all of this through Valerie Cooper, who is on the president's team who deals with the mutants and superhuman problems in the country. While this press conference is going on, you had a son of Wolverine watching the news, where of course, Valerie Cooper states that the virus was started by Wolverine and Weapon X. Now we first met Jimmy when Karen Grant and him form the Ultimate X team that is now working for Nick Fury, except Jimmy decides that he is tired of being on the Ultimate X team and wants to go see the place where his father became the test subject for the mutant virus. Shifting the focus back on the idea of camps being made in America as a way to contain mutants in, we learn that the American government is trying to paint a picture that these camps are loved by mutants, except in reality they are not. And we learn that Storm and Colossus are both in camps. Colossus is in one that is more of torturing him. But again, it is the American government lying about how these camps really are. We get the return of Rogue, but with her return, we get our introduction to Ultimate Nimrod, basically the new sentinel the American government has made to capture mutants across the nation. Now in the main Marvel Universe, Nimrod was the perfect sentinel from the future. Except here, of course, the Ultimate Marvel Universe was able to make Nimrod in the present day. 
finally, we get to see what the president is doing while this press conference is going on. Him and Nick Fury are seeing that everything is falling apart in the country and Nick Fury tells him things are only going to get worse from this moment here. But while they were talking, that is when we see Pietro appear, aka Quicksilver, the son of Magneto. Remember that in Ultimate Fallout, he had this plan to sell mutants to make a profit but he was secretly working for the ghost of his sister, the Scarlet Witch. Then we pick up who will become the main character of this book, which is Kitty Pride, who is with Bobby Drake, AKA Iceman, and Johnny Storm, AKA the Human Torch. We saw in Ultimate Fallout, they went into the Morlock tunnels to hide down there from the human race. Now, Kitty Pryde does not want to do any more superhero stuff, and she just wants to stay down there to hide from being arrested. Except on Iceman tablet, he shows her what is happening in the city and says they need to be heroes to save one of their old friends which of course is Rogue herself because she was the one being chased down by Nimrod. Now we pick up with Jimmy, the son of Wolverine, where we see that he is captured by a certain group. Now this is bringing back a character we have not seen since Ultimate X-Men tie-in to the Ultimatum event, which is William Stryker Jr. He was the character whose family died in the flood in Ultimatum, which made him hate mutants and lead an army of men who have built sentinel armor into their bodies to kill off most of the X-Men. Remember, he did not want to be like his father who hated mutants, but thanks to the flood, he kind of began the process of hating them. Well, really, he feels like God put him on this planet to kill mutants. But before we can focus more on him, we have to see Kitty, Bobby, and Johnny being a team for once and trying to save Rogue from the swarm of Nimrods. Now earlier I mentioned how the Nimrod robots were basically the perfect version of the first sentinel in this world. The reason why is because they are able to adapt to each mutant's powers and give them a run for their money. We see that here in this book where you have Nimrod being able to easily take on Johnny Storm and Iceman powers like it was nothing. Also the fact that you have Kitty Pride try to take on the Nimrods as well and her powers don't work either. And so this leads into them realizing that they can't beat these guys and so they grab rope and dip out before something else happens. Now Nick Spencer, the writer of this book, does a great job taking a character past that was barely explored and then builds on it for his story. Because back in the early days of Ultimate X-Men, we learned that Rogue was somewhat religious, especially when it came to her first time seeing Angel. So what Nick Spencer does is that he basically has her act like God has spoken to her, told her to go to the pier where the Nimrods were at and to cause havoc because she was told that her old friends would show up and save her. Focusing back on William Stryker Jr., we see him interrogating a young lady named Elise Cartwright. Now we don't get the chance to see Elise for that long. The reason why is because we see her quickly get killed off by William Stryker Jr. Now, before she was killed, we learn that after the ultimatum wave, when she was able to return back to her apartment, there was two mutants hiding in her home. And of course, with mutants being illegal, the kids had nowhere to go, so she took them in. But after that, more kids came and it led to a total of nine kids, of course, all being mutants. And so for William Stryker Jr., she sinned for protecting those kids. So he kills her off and we learn that his soldiers found the kids that she was trying to hide. But this leads into Nick Spencer growing the Ultimate X-Men world. The reason why I say that is because in Egypt, there was a light coming from a cave. 
and making it seem that something is coming. Now getting back to Quicksilver, we learn what he is trying to do. Well really, we get a learning block to his master plan, which is still unknown to us. But he understands the president is trying to control all of the flames from the chaos of all of his problems. And so you have Quicksilver offer a solution to help with those problems, especially a solution that will help with the mutant problem which gains the ear of both the president and Valerie Cooper, where we learn that this man is going to offer us Cerebro as a way to help the president with his mutant problem. Because if Cerebro falls in his hands, the president will be able to locate mutants across the globe. This is where you have Nick Spencer kind of start bringing the characters he wants to write about together. Because once you have Kitty, Bobby, Rogue, and Johnny get back to the Murloc tunnels, they are greeted by a young mutant boy named Joshua, where he asks the X-Men to help him and his friend that someone told him to come down to the Murloc tunnels to get help. We see that his friend is Jimmy, the son of Wolverine. This is where we learn that after Jimmy got captured earlier in this video, he actually broke out of his cage. His goal was to save the lives of the children because he knew something was going to happen to them. So of course he does break out and is able to break the kids out as well. The problem is that the kids he was with, well they all got shot and killed by the guards. Jimmy was able to jump in front of the bullets to save Joshua here, but they fell in the river and floated away. This is also showing Jimmy's healing factor is way slower than his father. Now Jimmy does wake up finally from his injuries where of course you have the X-Men asking him questions but he jumps to the point where he says that he needs their help because the people who grabbed him earlier were William Stryker Jr's men and he heard how Stryker is rounding up a bunch of mutants to kill them all at once making them an example for the whole world to see. That is when we see in New York at one of the riots, you have Stryker there with his men, telling his men to proceed with the plans. And we learn he has snipers placed around the city to kill people off. This is him saying it is time for the world to hear the word of the Lord. You have Nick Spencer spend some time going back over the past of William Stryker Jr. by going back over the events of Ultimatum, the Flood, building an army while using Sentinel armors and taking the fight to the Xavier School. But we never saw what happened to William Stryker Jr. after Ultimatum, but before this book right here. Well, we learn after he fought against the X-Men at the school, he was visited by his father's spirit. His father never truly treated him like a father should. He was physically and verbally abusive to Stryker. We get to see that again, even though this is just a spirit visiting his son, but you have his father basically encourage his son to continue the fight but go after anyone who has connections to mutants. So like their mothers, fathers, cousins, and the list goes on. But his father says God sent him on a mission to help Stryker to achieve a certain goal. This section is closed off with us picking up with William Stryker Jr torturing himself because maybe his father told him to, except he is confronted by a soldier tells him that they are ready. What he means is that Stryker now has a huge following waiting to hear his word, be their leader to go after the mutant race, but we also see he talks about having the ability to heal people, which is something very interesting to be honest. 
Getting back to the White House, you have Quicksilver still trying to sell Cerebro over to Valerie Cooper and the President, which at the end will help them locate mutants across the world. But sadly, their conversation gets interrupted because of the riots going on in New York City. They turn on the TV to see what William Stryker is doing in the city but get an update that he has taken out all of the cops and the national guards that were out there trying to control the riot. This is where we learn about why William Stryker is doing all of this for, and it is because men has sinned to him with the creation of mutants thanks to men, that is men going against what God had planned for men. That men is always trying to find ways to improve themselves and go against what God had made. Since mutants were against what God had planned, that is why he wants to kill them off. They are basically men's sin. It is wrong to sin. And that is why he has a truckload of mutants. He is going to kill all of them off on live television. Now with this being on live television, of course, the X-Men who are hiding out in the Morlock tunnels saw what happened, where you have Johnny, Bobby, and Jimmy agree to go save these mutants. Except, of course, Kitty does not want to help them out. She wants to stay safe and hidden in the Morlock tunnels, and this makes Johnny angry. Because Kitty Pride talks about what Peter Parker wants and acts like she was the only one who truly knows because her and Peter Parker dated. But you have Johnny make her angry by saying she does not have the right to act like she's the only one who knows what Peter Parker wanted. She was not there when it came to his final fight against Norman Osborn, the Green Goblin. So Kitty smacks Johnny and makes him fly across the room. But after that, all of the X-Men leave except Kitty to go save the mutants. Here comes the big plot twist because you have Joshua, the young boy, wake up from his nap because of the argument between the X-Men where he reveals to Kitty that Rogue is actually a traitor. That when it came to one of the attacks by Stryker, Joshua saw Rogue and Stryker talking like they're friends, which reveals to us that Rogue went to one of Stryker's sermons about healing the mutant race, and with her being religious, she went to him for help. We do get another page that shows William Stryker when he was younger, but this page was given to us as a hint of the true nature of William Stryker, but also see another example of his father verbally abusing him. But getting back to the present day, we pick up with Stryker going on with his big speech about how men need to atone for their sins. So you have him pick one mutant from the group he kidnapped. And this is where the big surprise comes in, where you have him being able to heal this random mutant mutated skin to make him look human again. Except right after he does that, he kills off the mutant right there on live television for the whole world to see. With that happening, we see at the White House that the president is freaking out. Doesn't help that you have Quicksilver speaking about how the American people will no longer believe in the president. First, the information got out about the idea of mutants being made by men. Then the riots across the nation. And now some madman New York killing mutants on live television. So with that, he starts to listen more to Quicksilver rather than listening to Valerie Cooper, who he hired to help with mutants and superhuman problems. And so you have Quicksilver go get Cerebro to help the president locate mutants. And the president kicks out Valerie out of the meeting. Except after that, she asks her assistant to grab files on both Quicksilver and William Stryker. She knows something is up. 
Switching back over to Striker, we see that he is going to continue the idea of healing mutants and killing them as a process of atoning for men's sin on the creation of mutants. But that is when you had the X-Men arrive to stop him. But this is a huge moment for the X-Men. This is when the X-Men realize that Rogue is actually a traitor for the team with William Stryker talking to her like they are allies. Now we jump back two weeks ago where we get the idea of how Rogue had joined the side of William Stryker. Now something else to mention as a reminder is that Rogue and William fought against each other back in the Ultimate X-Men tie-ins to the Ultimatum event. So when she walked into his camp, he was the only one who knew that she was a mutant. Now he tells her that he has the ability to heal mutants, but before he can do that for her, she must pay back for her sin, which is being a mutant. Because remember, she has become fully religious and believes she is a sin for being a mutant. And so with us learning that, you had a story jump back to the present day. And we pick up with Rogue basically betraying the X-Men. She takes out Iceman, Human Torch, and also Jimmy because William Stryker planned all of this. Her bringing the X-Men here to him, but of course after she does that, you have Kitty Pride appear to stop both Rogue and him because she knows that Rogue is a traitor thanks to Joshua. Then we get a few pages that show us the three different settings all at once. The president using Cerebro, Valerie Cooper looking into the folder of William Stryker and Kitty fighting against Rogue and William Stryker. Now we also see Quicksilver uploading Cerebra, the newer version of Cerebro, into the Nimrod system. But the main point of these pages is that you have Valerie find out something very important about William Stryker thanks to his folder. Except when she finds out and runs back to the president, Kitty Pride beats down on William Stryker which leads to him almost dying. But the big thing that Valerie found out about William Stryker is that he is a mutant himself which is a huge plot twist, but his father kept him drugged up to hide the fact that he was one, to keep him from showing his powers. But when the president asked what is William Stryker power is, Valerie Cooper tells him that he can control machines, and that is the moment he controls all of the Nimrod Sentinels in America, meaning that he can proceed to kill off all the mutants across the country. Before we can see William Stryker using the Nimrods to cause havoc across the nation, we actually jump back three weeks ago and we pick up with Rogue again. We see her going to a church to pray, but someone else this time greets her about her prayers being answered. Back in the present day, we see that when Kitty Pryde was fighting against William Stryker, she actually killed him, but killing him does not stop his control over the army of Nimrods. So before she is able to do anything to Rogue, you have Rogue show what is going on behind her, which is Nimrod attacking the city looking for mutants to kill. Now when Valerie Cooper answered the question that still needs to be answered, the main one is how Stryker was able to heal mutants. Well, she explains that since mutants were man-made and the X gene in them is technically tech, William Stryker is able to use his powers to shut down the X gene. That is how he was able to heal mutants. But thanks to the president sending in the Nimrod army to stop William Stryker, he just basically gave a terrorist an army of robots to kill off mutants. With that being said, you have Quicksilver leave because he got what he wanted. Now truthfully, you would think we would get some epic battle between the X-Men and the Nimrods in the middle of the city, except we don't. 
we really get the X-Men trying to defend themselves against these Nimrods long enough until the Nimrods decide to leave the X-Men and the other mutants alone. So with that happening, you have the X-Men wondering where in the world are the Nimrods going to? But you had the X-Men realize they had the time to escape before the Nimrods come back. But the Nimrods are now under the control of Stryker's powers and now he is sending them across the nation to wipe out the mutant race. But 20 minutes later, you had the X-Men and the mutants William had kidnapped escaped back into the Murloc tunnels. With them being in the tunnels, the question is, what's next? Because now Kitty Pride's plan is falling apart. It was supposed to be just her, Bobby, and Johnny Storm. Now there's Rogue and also the group of mutants. But that is when you have what happened in Ultimate Hawkeye in the Ultimate book. Oracle telling the world about coming to Tien, which used to be Seer, to be welcome and have somewhere to be safe. This only happened after Rogue told the X-Men that God told her after Stryker they needed to go to Seer. And so with that message appearing, it seems more like God has been talking to Rogue. Or is it God? Now to close on this book, this is where you had a story shift back in time to reveal to us who met with Rogue at that church we saw just a moment ago that it is actually Charles Xavier himself. He was the one who spoke to Rogue about doing certain things. The question is, is this really Charles Xavier? Because he died in Ultimatum. But this is where we're going to end today's video. So please hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I'll see you guys next time. Later.